see there are many ways to enjoy the authority that immunes you against sickness or against unclean spirits number one is your personal understanding your personal understanding of the finished work of Christ it has to be a personal revelation for you number two the advantage of prophetic covering listen carefully I'm showing you the ways that God designed for believers to be immune number one is a product of your personal revelation of the finished work of Christ that means as a personal responsibility you go to understand the implication of his death burial resurrection how that he defeated satan sin hell and the grave he resurrected triumphant and he's now seated at the right hand of the father what that means to you and then the advantage of prophetic covering you know the advantage of prophetic covering because everybody will come into this understanding gradually so prophetic covering was put to midwife your victory while you learn and while you grow that is why there are people the moment they become connected to certain visions even before they come into certain levels of understanding they enjoy certain privileges are we together now remember when the blood was put on the lintel of the nation of Israel it didn't matter the personal belief of the person in the room provided there was blood on the lintel everybody within that room even if you were an armed robber you were saved from the angel of death hallelujah dominion over unclean spirits I have seen wicked spirits in my vision I know what they do to families. Sometimes I am pained when I watch the ignorance of believers. They just assume that just because Jesus has died, everything automatically is gone. No, let me show you a scripture. Hebrews chapter 2, please. Give us from verse 6 to verse 9. Hebrews 2. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Please let me have your attention. Or the son of man that thou visitest him. Seven. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. The word yes, Elohim. A little lower than God. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. And did set him over the works of your hands. Read verse 8 with me please. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Uh -huh. For in that he put all things in subjection under his feet. He left nothing that is not put under his feet. The tragedy is in the last line. Read on please. But now we see not yet all things under him. Just stop there. Are you seeing that now? Paul is the one who was given the privilege of what we call the Pauline epistles. He understood redemption from a standpoint of divine revelation. And Paul is saying in as much as it is true, that in Christ victory has been accorded every believer but he says now experientially we do not yet see all things under his feet it is true that no cause should walk in your life but now we do not yet see the manifestation of that victory because mama is still crying the young men are still in bondage the women are still feeding the men in that family it ought not to be so now your assignment as a believer is to number one regardless your condition to believe that the truths that have been captured as far as Christ's finished work will not change let God be true and all men liars then number two to take the responsibility to know that between prophecy and manifestation there is something you need to understand and there is something you need to engage this is a missing link for many people, especially among the Pentecostal charismatic circles. So we just leave everything to God and say, don't worry. Or at best, we believe the only thing we should do is just to speak. I believe in speaking the word. But if the only thing you do in terms of destiny actualization is speaking the word, you may live a painful Christian experience. Laced with all kinds of disappointments. Because speaking is not the only thing you are mandated to do. There are actions of obedience based on what scripture 
has given us and based on the Rima word that comes by the Spirit as a unique strategy for you. If the nation of Israel kept shouting before Jericho, in the name of Jesus, Jericho, you must go down. They would have died for nothing. Beyond speaking, a strategy was given to them and they walked in obedience and that's what brought Jericho down. Listen to me. I want to challenge you. I have seen this in my visions and the word of God confirms it. There, um, there is an onslaught of wicked spirits being released in this end time over ministries, over men of God, over families. Walking in spiritual ignorance will be a costly bargain in this end time. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Satan sees that that lady, that gentleman will rise to become the horn that exalts the family. All of a sudden leads to the next one. You will start seeing mysterious sicknesses. Have you seen people with all due respect who were say AA? All of a sudden they now find out that they were SS for instance. And they cannot explain where that came from. Or you find someone who has been healthy, living a responsible life and the next thing they say you are having HIV. HIV from where? Sorry you are having HIV. That's the end of discussion. Or someone just begins to feel pain side of your chest anywhere and then it's, it looks like child's play until they tell you sorry from what we are seeing you've been having cancer in the last three years cancer where did it come from i eat healthy i've done my best ladies and gentlemen this is more than a health issue there are spirits their assignment is to take you out of the way for the sake of those who will be blessed by your life but again, I'm praying for somebody. In the name of Jesus, you came for Koinonia tonight. If there is any sickness in your body, whether you have detected it or not, that is growing to become any blood disease or any cancerous statement in your life as sickness, you are a man and it looks like enlarged prostrate is growing to become cancer or cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer. I don't care what it is called. I curse it now in the name of Jesus. I curse it now in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. I told you a story here years ago. This happened in Zaria. True story. A woman who was pregnant and in her dream, she would always see like monkeys. True story. Come, you know, to molest her and all of that. And she just shrugged it over. True story. She had a stillbirth as she gave out, gave birth to a hairy child looking physically like monkeys. Ministries like medicine, you will see all kinds of things that you would not have believed except that it is right before you. I have seen a woman who got pregnant. Her husband had died. Oh, she got pregnant because a spirit came to molest her and physically she started getting pregnant. And you see, as a man of God, all those problems is you, they bring it to. Everybody just runs to you and say, look, just know what to do with me because this one is a spirit. Don't get into end time ministry if you don't have power. You will make a mockery of yourself, your family and the name of Jesus. Are we together now? Yeah. Let's talk about sicknesses and disease. I have taught you koinonia that sickness is an, a gradual administration of death upon a person. Now, the way God designed his system, let me repeat for your understanding, is that everybody is given the privilege of one body per lifetime. Please do not forget this. We are given the privilege of one body to host your spirit per lifetime. Lifetime meaning the period from when you are born until you finally transit out of this realm. You are given the liberty to have one body per lifetime. And maintaining that body is important for your longevity. Are we together now? Yes. And one of the commonest ways that Satan 
takes people out of this realm before their time knowing the laws that God created around living is that he afflicts your body listen please so that your body deteriorates now there is a certain health requirement for your spirit to remain in your body when your body deteriorates beyond that point your spirit will have to leave whether you are done with your assignment or not so when Satan sees that this person, it looks like there's nothing we can do with that person, sickness comes into your body. And what happens is that it starts to deteriorate your body and it gets to a point where your body can no longer host your spirit. And at that point, you will have to leave. Hallelujah. This is what happened to the man Elisha. Even though he was an anointed man of God, you will think as anointed as Elisha was, a man who could heal anything, he died of sickness. It was sickness that killed him and the anointing was still in him. And that anointing was there in the bones and it raised a dead body back to life. Yet it killed the one, the one who had it could not benefit from it because there are rules of engagement. Are we together? They were bringing a dead body and the dead body fell and touched the bones of Elisha and jacked back to life. What a miracle. And yet the person, the owner of that body became sick until he died. 